let me ask you, what happens when you face a challenge or you need a perspective on a situation or you're stuck with an idea that you just can't seem to focus on or you have a problem that you need to solve and you're going it alone to fix it all? Is it overwhelm? Do you, do you stay stuck in your own head? Do you give up? Do you solve only what you can figure out yourself? Or do you miss something you didn't even know you missed? How about all the above at one time or another? You know, solo is fine for some things, yet you don't have to be so alone. A personal story. I'm a reasonably successful entrepreneur with my own, well, I think brilliance and, and creative talents. And yet I missed a lot. I didn't do things that could have grown my business faster because I didn't know how. I wasted time, money, energy, and at times I felt overwhelmed when I was challenged to grow. Another story. When I was a leader and a manager moving up in my corporate career, I felt alone as a black woman in a white male Fortune 50 company, navigating the people responsibilities of those I led and the politics of the organization along my growth path. And then as a solo entrepreneur, you know, I didn't learn how to be an entrepreneur in college or in grad school. I learned over time, however, how to gather the people that I needed to help me not operate solely on my own. Now, we have all kinds of ways to, to connect with people, short-term, long-term, physically in person, and virtually. Yet, it took years of trial and error to learn and succeed with the right kind of people in a productive way to realize proficiently and to realize peak profitability in my career and in my business. So imagine how much more valuable it can be to have a small group of people of like success in business minds with different experiences and with different perspectives who as a group can create an energy for you that transcends all of your individual brain power as if you've created a third mind. And then together, you can discover things, you can solve problems, you can introduce each other to networks that you would not connect with on your own. And you can discover ways to save time, to save money, and to develop resources in each other that you didn't even know you didn't have. Now, I know you may have tried getting people together before, yet it didn't last. Some gave more than others or nothing consequential happened of it uh, other than a lot of talk and no action. Well, today I wanna shorten your learning and your experience curve by sharing with you in the few minutes that we have together, how when two or more people come together with like mindsets of, of success and support for each other and a structured way of operating, then they create a third invisible, intangible force, which can be likened to a third mind. Now, this is the concept that was put into practice by Socrates, the philosopher, by Benjamin Franklin, an American statesman, by Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, and in contemporary times, by countless coaches, consultants like you, and even myself. In fact, I've created a business around it. You know, so often when we operate solo, we don't know who or what, we don't know. 
and you know, friends and family are fine. Yet we need more for our businesses and careers. You know, not just social networks, networking, meet and greets, meetups, or gossip and complaints. Yeah. My colleagues and my and my clients tell me that my zone of genius is connecting the dots to grow bigger circles. And my passion and my belief is that when people come together, great things happen. So I'm gonna share with you five key conditions that make for successful supportive groups of the people that we need to help us, to help us move forward with intentional focus, with intentional and focused actions in our careers and in our businesses. Now, whether you call these groups advisory boards or CEO cohorts, brain trusts or mastermind groups, these five conditions ensure that the group is of value to you and ensure individual and your accountability. So here are the five conditions. First of all, the group size should be between five and eight people maximum, including yourself. And each member, this is key, each member must be personally committed to participating fully with mindsets of success for each other. Second condition, the group must meet regularly and consistently with documented, and that's key, documented and agreed to core values, norms, operational processes, and peer-to-peer -peer enforcement of it all. Third condition, you need a facilitator. You need a facilitator who is not a group member because the facilitator should be trained to facilitate group processes and interactions. Those are special skills. Facilitation skills are special skills. They're not training. They're not coaching. They're not, not uh, psychology. Well, some psychology is involved, but, but the skill of, of keeping a group together and keeping people talking with each other and asking the right questions, that comes from a trained facilitator. And that's one component of a group that makes it successful long-term. The fourth condition, everyone must own accountability to their committed actions and that, that result in improved productivity, expanded possibilities, and, and increased profitability for themselves and for each other. And then finally, the fifth condition, the group facilitator and the group members need to draw resources and guidance to create and maintain such a group from people who are experienced in running and facilitating them regularly so that you avoid or you know, at least minimize the pitfalls, the disappointments, the challenges that are typical of starting and running them on your own. One of the most significant actions you can take for your own success is to integrate groups into your own business offerings. And it increases your profitability and, and the variety of the offerings that you have and services that you have. Another step is to join or form one for yourself. Or if you're in an organization, something that's not done often is to consider establishing one at your workplace to demonstrate and practice your what I call servant leadership skills. Now, I've summarized these five points, plus I've created a startup and operations checklist that you can download from, I'll give you the link, from mindteamsolutions.com slash saddlebag dash win 21. That's long, long URL, I'll say it again, mindteamsolutions.com slash saddlebag, like what you throw over a motorcycle, I ride. So saddlebag dash win 21, okay? Or reach out to me at the win thought leader page to pursue how you can make your own group come together so that great things can happen. Make a fantastic day.